Okay, so on to our final speaker um, of the night. So um, next up is Vera, um, and she is an aspiring ultra distance uh, athlete, and she's also a tandem enthusiast. So if you've got any more tandem questions that we didn't manage to get to, uh, maybe Zavira will uh, be able to help with that. Um, she's um, we're we're long term stalkers of Vera's Instagram. She's got a fantastic Instagram. I will also share it in the chat. Um, and she's um, she's really inspiring and describes herself as um, a big advocate for BAME cycling. So welcome, Vera. Thank you so much for joining us from all the way from Wales. <laughs> Thank you welcome. very much. I'm just going to try and share my screen. Hopefully it works. Um, can you all see that? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so first of all, thank you um, to Lady Pedal for inviting me and it's been amazing just listening to the, the incredible, amazing stories um, that the other three have shared um, and a big thank you as well to everyone who's tuned in to listen. So my name is Vera, I'm from Malawi um, and I currently live in Cardiff and I'm an aspiring ultra distance cyclist. So um, my cycling story, um, so I've always known how to cycle as a child but didn't for most of my sort of teenage years. Um, but I'd say my cycling journey really began in earnest about four years ago. So it's quite relatively young, I think, compared to everyone else's. Um, I'd just moved to Cardiff um, and I'd started dating this crazy bloke um, who lured me into cycling under the false promise that this contraption, which I had neither heard of nor seen at this point, um, called a tandem, um, would allow me to see the country, um, enjoying gorgeous views on the back, sipping champagne, not having to do any pedaling at all. So in my naivety, I thought, this is a great deal. Um, so he went and signed us up for this charity um, ride, which was cycling from Snowdonia down to Cardiff. It was about 220 miles um, in two days. Now, when we had three months to prepare for this. So um, any sane person um, with practically zero cycling experience um, would have backed out. But I was a few months into dating this guy and I clearly had left all my senses back at home in a drawer somewhere. So yeah, fast forward three months. And I'm on this mad adventure, um, suffering punctures by the dozen, running out of brake pads and having to use our feet to brake um, and sweating my way across Wales. It was for me at the time, the most physically challenging thing I had done. Um, and I soon realized that I was lied to about not having to pedal. So um, it was glorious type two fun after months of therapy. <laughs> um, and that's how I caught the cycling bug. So fast forward um, a year, and I bought my first solo road bike. Um, I wanted to meet new people and build my solo cycling skills. Um, so I joined a local cycling club um, where I started going for some ladies and beginners rides, um, ate pl plenty of cake and saw more of Wales, um, which is great. But one thing that I started noticing, um, I think was the lack of diversity in terms of black and ethnic minority riders. I mean, it's not something I dwelled on at the time, um, but it was pre pretty obvious that I stuck out like a sore thumb um, on these club rides. Um, everyone I cycled with was super friendly and I always felt welcome. Um, but I guess in the back of the mi in my mind, I sometimes wondered if I truly um, belong there, given that no one else that um, looked like me seemed to um, be in these spaces. Um, so fast forward to the first lockdown of 2020 um, and suddenly we couldn't go out with other people. Um, I had become dependent on others so, you know, figure, people figuring out the route, I just sort of follow along. And suddenly this was no longer an option. Um, so I quickly learned how to plan and follow my own routes and just go out on my bike, sometimes solo, um, sometimes on the tandem with my husband, who's the crazy cycling bloke who got me into, <laughs> into cycling in the first place. So, um, I'm a, so I'm a social being. Um, so I'm still desperate to find a community. Um, and at this point, um, you know, longing to see other people, other cyclists that look like me. Um, and I basically wanted to share my love of cycling um, with others who maybe hadn't given it much thought um, before, maybe because they don't see themselves represented um, in these spaces. So I decided to start um, an Instagram page, um, which is, I guess, a COVID secure way of finding a community um, of wheel loving folk um, that I could connect with. Um, so most of all, I just wanted a way to share um, sort of photos, stories of my cycling adventures, tips and tricks, and really just hope that somewhere out there, um, some black lady might see me and be inspired and maybe see herself in me and want to give cycling a go too. Um, I didn't expect much of it, um, 
but the page quickly grew um, and within a couple of um, months I was at over a uh, thousand followers um, and then um, I started meeting so many other women on the page um, you know people black women um, just um, different people all over the country and all over the world who also had similar um, stories of seeking greater representation um, I got introduced to this group called the Women of Colour um, Cycling Group, which was still relatively new at the time, um, but has since grown significantly. So it's now a, a national um, a national group. Um, and I started participating in these um, Zoom meetings and Instagram live chats and just really exploring some of the issues of underrepresentation um, of, of Black and minority ethnics in cycling. So um, the more I connected with new people through my page. Um, for me, the more I got, it got me out cycling um, and I wanted to just inspire more people. But most of all, I felt really inspired by seeing um, these other women doing amazing things. Some raced, um, some were working towards becoming professional cyclists and most just cycled for the love of it. Um, but seeing all these different types of cyclists, um, some who looked like me, gave me the confidence to start exploring cycling a bit further um, so I've had a go at indoor um, and outdoor track cycling, so just sharing some of the photos there. Um, mountain biking, um, um, I think I had a go at that for the first time in November last year. Um, obviously tandem, tandem touring um, and just going further on my road bike. Um, and it's the sort of tandem touring and um, long distance cycling that I've enjoyed the most. So um, towards the end of last year, um, during an Instagram live chat with another wonderful cycling advocate called Aoife Glass, she casually asked what my cycling plans were for the future. Now, I hadn't given it much thought um, at that point. And I said, oh, I'd like to, you know, I said the first thing that came to mind, which was that I wanted to keep increasing my distance and my mileage. And maybe, just maybe one day in the distant, distant future, do a long distance event like Land's End to John O'Groats, or the transcontinental race or something like that. So keep in mind, I was saying this at a point when my um, weekly, average weekly cycling distance is about 80 kilometers. So not great in the grand scheme of what I was sort of talking about. Um, but soon after that, she forwarded me a link to the scholarship opportunity um, that had just been released that very day. It was by a bike shop called Cloud9 Cycles. Um, and it was aimed at um, black and minority ethnic cyclists. Now they were offering um, a fully custom built bike, um, paid entry to this race called the Pan Celtic Race, um, a training coach and other support to get you to the start line. Um, in the wake of the Black Lives Matter movement from last year, this is one of the sort of few companies that were actually taking active steps towards um, increasing, um, improving representation and um, inclusivity and diversity in cycling. Um, so just sharing a screenshot of the, the sort of um, the route of the Pan Celtic race, which is in July this year. So um, after she sent me this, I thought, oh, crap, I've said it. And now I have to put my money where my mouth is. I mean, nothing um, fires you up for committing to something like saying it out loud to the world. Um, so before I could overthink things um, and question my experience and ability, I bunked together an application and um, sent it off the next day. So I spent the following month in a bunch of nerves. Um, I was asking myself who I thought I was applying for something like this, given my limited experience in self-supported cycling and ultra distance cycling or racing. Um, I then convinced myself that there was no way that I was ever gonna get it. Um, so I stopped worrying and almost forgot about it. Um, fast forward a few weeks and on New Year's day, I got an email to say I'd been awarded the opportunity. Um, I didn't know what to make, a feel, uh, make of it, um, and I was in utter shock. So I was excited and panicked at the same time, and there was no turning back. This is my challenge, and I was committing to it. So I'm now working towards doing this ride, which is the 1,600 miles um, and 100,000 feet of climbing. And the race is meant to be completed in 7 to 14 days. So the fastest would be doing about 230 miles a day. I'm now two months into structured training and I've got a wonderful coach, Alison Wood, um, as part of the scholarship. Um, so I've never done structured training before and this is a sort of, I'm two months into that. Um, and she's been creating training plans and is helping to build my strength um, both on and off the bike. 
Um, and I've had to learn a lot um, in the short space of time. Um, I had to get set up on a turbo because obviously the weather is not always <laughs> great and friendly out there um, just to help um, do some of those workouts. Um, and I've had to make adjustments to my nutrition and also do a lot more sleeping, which is great um, for recovery. Um, and it's been hard work. Um, as you can see in that photo in the middle where I was passing out after a six hour long um, turbo session. Um, I still got a lot to learn before I get to the start line. Um, and I think for me, um, I'm not, it's the most challenging bits are the off the bike stuff. I'm not very experienced at camping. So the self-supported part will be a challenge. Um, but ultimately it's a huge test for me, um, both physically and mentally. Um, and I want to see if I've got what it takes um, and hopefully in the process, inspire others to do the same and just push, um, push um, beyond their preconceived limits. So I assume, assuming I survive this, um, and I'm hoping that I do, um, I'd like to do some more epic long distance rides, um, whether that's the Land's End to John O'Groats and the Transcontinental Race, um, and just go on more epic tandem touring adventures, which are still my favorite type of cycling. So just doing it at a relaxed pace, eating my way across the country and sampling the best wine or cider on offer. I've continued to share my journey through my Instagram page, um, my experiences training for the, for the event, um, the ups and downs and the lessons learned. Um, and for me, really, my goal is quite simple and it's to continue to enjoy cycling and to share that love with others um, and to be part of that sort of desperately needed representation um, and that role model for someone that I didn't often have. Um, so somewhere out there, you know, a little black lady or anyone can see me doing what I do um, and suddenly something that, you know, she didn't consider or realize was an option for her becomes an option and she thinks, I want to give that a go. So for me, my cycling, um, first and foremost, empowers me. Um, and I like to think that sort of taking on some of these challenges um, empowers others too. Um, so yeah, that's a sort of whistle stop tour of my cycling, cycling story. Thank you. That was incredible. I think you've inspired loads of people and there's some really fab messages for you in the chat, um, along with some questions too. So um, it's over to Noemi who's been collating the questions. Thank you, Vera. It's just fa it's fascinating to have you over and witness like the, yeah, all it takes to actually have the guts for taking on a, such an adventure. Uh, so there has been uh, some question about from Ellen in the chat about what is what is it about long distance cycling that makes it your favorite thing over other type of riding? Um, I think for me, it's like, it's, you get into a meditative state. You can, it's enough time to sort of just block out the world and get into the rhythm of things. And, you know, nothing else matters, but you're just pedaling along, feeding yourself and just being at one with it, with the environment. And I think, yeah, sort of long rides, long day rides or multi-day rides sort of give me that, that, that sort of peace of mind. Thank you. And I'm guessing the, the recent turbo <laughs> intensity training doesn't always answer to that crazy. <laughs> you no, know, no, after I did that, I, I, yeah, because it was, it was really cold those weekends. It was like zero degrees. And, but after that six hour turbo session, I was like, I need to remind myself why I love cycling. And I went out instead the next, the next weekend to do the long rides. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was not ideal. <laughs> Imagine, yeah. uh, one question from Heidi was uh, about the longest endurance ride uh, that you have completed uh, so far as now. You mentioned the, the first 220 kilometers, right? Yeah, so the, the 220 mile ride, that was the tandem. I was really unfit at the point. So I, I, I think I was being carried along most of it, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so in terms of solo riding, the longest ride I've done is a 110 mile um, sort of day ride. Um, so still a lot to build because I'm hoping to do about probably 170, 180 a day for 12 days of, for this sort of pan Celtic race. So, um, yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm guessing you must see progress every day on that. And, and, <laughs> I'm hoping, I mean, I've got, I've got to do, a, as part of the training, they, you do this, FTP test, which is your functional threshold power. And it's a test to see how much power you're putting. And I did my first one last month and I've got my next one tomorrow morning. 
And I'm just like, yeah, it's just quite um, anxious to see how have I developed over those four weeks and, and how am I progressing in my training? So yeah, it'd be interesting. Interesting indeed. Uh, we have a question from Hannah, quite practical one. Uh, she's saying she also uh, identify herself as aspiring endurance cyclist. Yeah. Uh, and would like to do distance and camp as well, but uh, she's not rocking the fast bit. So she's asking for any uh, tips on how to get faster. Um, she's also asking about comfort and saddles. Uh, if you have any tips that you can um, give to. Tips on getting faster. I'm, I'm not the fastest. I think that's what I'm trying to improve now. Um, but one of the things that uh, really helped was being part of a club. So... Um, as part of my cycling club, there are loads of different, there are different um, types of rides, whether it's beginners or intermediate. And sometimes I just go to like the faster ride. I'd be, you know, on the bag trying to hold on to dear life, but that sort of pushed you beyond that, you know, rather than just going for the sort of steadier rides all the time. So varying it. Um, and also I found that um, the turbo trainer, whilst I absolutely hate it, <laughs> is really good for just focusing and working on your technique and, and getting faster as well. Um, uh, yeah, what was the other question? Sorry. Uh, the other question was about comfort in the saddle. Uh, yeah, so as part of my scholarship, I'm getting a bike fit, which I think, um, and a custom build bike, which will be really helpful because currently my bike's not really well suited to my shape. So I'm not the best to give advice on that because I am struggling with a bit of aches and pains, but it's really important if you are interested in cycling, you know, any distance, but especially if you're doing any ultra, you've got to have the right setup because, you know, if you're on the bike day in, day out, every day, those small little pains that you can put up with on shorter rides, they become really like significant. So that's something I'm still trying to sort of hone at the moment. And I'm constantly making adjustments to my own bike, my saddle, my cleat position and, and all of that. Um, another question uh, related to the wrong, longer ride uh, is uh, concerning the mechanics. What do you do when you don't have the right equipment with you? What's your <laughs> backup plan? <laughs> um, <laughs> again, um, oh, so seeking help, I think people are always helpful. So um, earlier in the year, I was with my family in Malawi and I had so many punctures on the road. And it's sometimes just the goodwill of people that I sort of relied on. Um, and, and sometimes you just have to be innovative and, and figure out what's, what's in your surroundings and you're just desperate to get, you know, get home before it's dark. Um, but I'm, one of my things that I'm doing for over the next few months is I've got this really good book. Um, it's like a Haynes book called The Bike Book. And I'm going to be sort of learning different bike maintenance and, and just how to survive and fix things um, because someone's putting up a book as well <laughs> it's great um yeah um because as a as I said because my I'd say tandem cycling was my gateway into cycling and part of that is I sort of almost became dependent on the person my, my, my husband now who to sort of fix things and this challenge is like you know I'm, I'm taking my independence back and I'm going to figure out how to do things on my own um and and so it's all part of my journey now yeah besides the training that adds up to yeah a lot of skills to acquire as well yeah yeah um jenna is asking in the chat whether you do wild camping during long distance race or do you do wild camping so yeah there that's the thing i was looking at yesterday so there you can um camp or bivy or uh, sleep at uh, hotels and things like that obviously hotels would just make your budget just blow so um i'm looking to i've never done any bivying but I'm given that a go I've asked to borrow a baby bag um, for when we're allowed to go out again and when the weather gets good to give that a go but most likely I'm thinking it might be camping and just having some sort of structure over my head so I don't you know because rest is quite important if you're cycling again day to day so yeah there's loads of different options yeah I guess the winter time is not the best for try trying out days and getting trained with it <laughs> Um, there are two last questions uh, that are more uh, promotion oriented. So we have one question about um, uh, Heidi that has a, a company and they're back embarking on our, our, on our DNI awareness. And um, yeah, and she's asking for help to promote it. So I'll, I'll let you uh, get in touch the two of you together. Uh, and then we have um, Anna that has a magazine. Um, and 
she one time did fill a run and she asked a woman of color who was there that she if she fancies writing an article but she, she had no answer so she's asking you about tips on how to approach non-white people so to include more yeah uh, people uh, article about uh, other experiences yeah you're welcome to share my email with, with some of those people if they'd like to get in touch all right um and then there is uh lots of comments uh supporting you and encouraging you i'm reading uh, them. thank you so much everyone i'm gonna i need to like just mentally save these so that i can be telling them to myself when i'm crying up that climb somewhere getting rained on in ireland um so yeah <laughs> oh, we'll send you a copy of the chat to uh, <laughs> your motivational comments <laughs> Yeah, and we for sure keep on, yeah, look at your uh, Instagram post and, and follow your uh, adventure in there. Thank you so much, Vera. It's been really inspiring and fascinating. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much.